it is about contest. It is about contention. If you have to struggle, if you have to maintain democracy, to make it achieve its objective, then you have to allow contestations to take place. You, there has to be contention. There has to be eternal vigilance, struggle. And let us remember, development is the struggle of opposites. It's only when opposite reactions come in that you have development. And so we accept that. We cannot have democracy of the graveyard with only one party system. And so I now put it to the students. Now, people are saying democracy. I remember Francis Fukuyama's the end of, what is it? End of history. Yes, the end of history and the last man. That democracy is not the universal ethos across the world with the end of the Cold War. So I told them to take their pen. Two issues that Asimoglu emphasized, liberal institutions, inclusive democratic system, inclusive political system, and inclusive economic system. Now we have democracy in our country. What is preventing us from moving forward? Why are we not improving? Because democracy is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. We are not going to eat democracy. Democracy per se is not going to put food on the table. It's not going to improve poverty if we don't put it to creative use. And so they listed a number of conditions. And so they said corruption. We have to fight corruption, which everybody here has agreed to. There have to be strong institutions in our country to be able to implement the will of the state. And there has to be accountability and transparency, and then the rule of law. Then how do we implement this? And that is the point that I agree with Governor Amechi. I've not always agreed with him on all issues. In fact, privately, I disagree with him. He said there has to be citizens' action to ensure that the above takes place. If there is no citizens' action, if we don't have our own Tahiri Square, as it happened in Cairo, where the citizens will rise up and say, we can have it no more, we will continue to talk for 1,000 years and nothing will happen, and the country will continue to be poor. So we have to rise up. We have to rise up as a nation, as individuals, and fight corruption. We have to raise up our voices against all the ills that militate against democracy in this country. We, what we need is democracy, not kleptocracy, which is happening at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, I've listened to the two lectures, and um, there's an interesting uh, theme here, the issue of corruption. The past 25 years I've been shouting on the issue of corruption, systemic corruption. But unless Nigeria addresses that issue, we will go nowhere. Uh, systemic corruption has become a culture. I mean, I'll give you two examples, briefly. I was driving down from the University of Port Harcourt to town, and I had to use a bypass, so I got to Zwaba. There was a holdup. I was surprised at the holdup in a rural place like that. So after waiting for five, ten minutes, I came out of my car, walked up to the road. A policeman had stopped uh, a commercial bus driver, collected money, and incredibly, this man was looking for a change to come and give to the driver. <laughs> that was the cause of the holdup. I was shocked. So I waited until the man finished, got the change, and came and gave to the bus driver. Then the man moved. And then that's how traffic started uh, moving. That is at the bottom. Now I'm going to give you an example at the top. I once gave a lecture to uh, a governor, his team, his commissioners, members of the house, uh, one of the states, I won't mention the name. And I told the governor and his team what they could do uh, to create enough jobs for everybody in the state. When the governor stood up, he addressed more or less me. I said, Professor Kowa, yes, listen to your lecture, but I want to tell you, uh, if you go to the north, all the industries are dead. Go to the south, they are all dead. Go to the east, they are dead. Go to the west, they are dead. There's only one viable industry in Nigeria, politics. That's what a sitting governor told me in the presence of his commissioners and members of the House of Assembly. So you can understand, I've quoted one from the very bottom, and I've quoted one from up. It is systemic. It has become part of us. All of us have become implicated. The universities are now so corrupt. I gave a lecture sometime at uh, Abuja, I think late last year, and I said the way the universities are going, 
If we don't stop it in the next couple of years, unless you are known rogue, you cannot be vice chancellor. That's a condition. It must be a confirmed rogue. Otherwise, you cannot be a vice chancellor. That is how much the universities have degenerated. So, it, it, I'm a university man. Those days where we keep attacking the politicians, oh, politicians, those days are over. We are all involved. It reminds me, with due respect to my uh, prof here, Professor Briggs, there's a medical disease they call uh, systemic uh, lupus erythematosus, where the cells of the body, instead of defending, attacking, uh, attacking all these pathogens, begin to attack the cells of the body. That is what systemic corruption is doing to our country. And we must address that issue, otherwise we go nowhere. We talk all the, the people who are most corrupt are those who shout to the top about systemic corruption. You know, that, that's part of it. It's what Ake, later Ake will call uh, 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 defensive radicalism. If you know you're a rogue of the first order, you shout against stealing, most. You know, it's a defensive radicalism. And that is what Nigerians have graduated to. Those who steal the more, shout the more against stealing. And uh, we, 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 we can't continue like that. We cannot continue like that. You know, it's unfortunate. Now, uh, you did mention a number of issues. I want to tackle this issue of systemic corruption. Again, last time I gave a lecture in Abuja, I thought through it. I said, how do we solve this systemic corruption uh, issue? And I told myself, we have to change the rules. Uh, fortunately, John uh, Strachan made mention of something like that. I said, we need to change the rules in our country. Nobody should go to jail for corruption. We should start a new position. Every Nigerian who is rich should be assumed to be a thief until he proves otherwise. Every Nigerian who is rich is a thief unless he can prove the sources of his uh, income. And I gave a blueprint on how these things can be done. I now said people should now be allowed to report uh, theft to the agencies and they should be paid some amount. Uh, if my uncle is a thief and I report him, he has stolen a billion, 5% of that, that's about 50 million, I get that. Yes, knowing the kind of people Nigerians are, people will report their fathers. Yes, people will report their fathers if they don't benefit something. And then the policemen prosecuting the thieves, they should, should get a, a something for successful prosecution. You know, and then our judiciary too, something has to be done. We should create courts that specifically deal with corruption issues. And there should be a law. If a matter stays in any judge's court for more than six months, the judge should be assumed to have collected bribe unless he proves otherwise and should be jailed. You know, those are the kinds of rules I gave in that lecture. And in my view, there are two options. Other societies have been as corrupt as Nigeria. China was very corrupt at some point in its history, extremely corrupt, but it did something. We've heard about England, very corrupt. So we have two options. We wait for history to take its time over the next maybe 100 years, 200 years, uh, the corruption will go away, or uh, we take drastic uh, actions. Nigerians are to choose which, uh, which, which method they want to use. And let me also say this, that this, in economics, generally during the development process, because people have been talking of inequality, it's a general pattern in economics that during the development process, inequality tends to increase up to a point. And then it will begin to uh, decline. In economics, we call it the reverse u shaped theory of Kuznets, you know, Kuznets law. You know, so it's a normal thing. The only problem with the case of Nigeria is this, and this is the source of the corruption too. This is our source. And this is another method of solving Nigeria's corruption. What brought about that corruption? Oil. Oil was discovered in the Niger Delta, inhabited by minorities. Okay. The majority group simply hijacked this oil, denied the owners of the oil, and expropriated the wealth of the minorities, which they used to distribute to themselves. So political activity in Nigeria is tailored towards capturing power for the purpose of sharing in the Niger Delta oil loot. That is the bottom line. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I think what we're going to do is say thank you to our distinguished panel uh, they'll now leave the stage, and I invite Jack Straw to come back onto the stage so you can ask either Jack Straw or John Bruton any questions that you might have on your mind. But now let us say thank you to our panel.
Thank you very much. Good one.